everybody who is here and the stay at the end of the talk is more than welcome to join us for dinner at 6.45 at the usual place, Evelyn's. But please let me know whether you can come back after the talk. Let's call it Alright, so we are not, not yet ready. Uh, so here's the platform until. Okay. <laughs> But, 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 but I forgot what you told me. Let's uh, try to find it. But is it called? What is it mean? Never mind, mind, just use the main, Forget about the main PDF. But it's not. It's removable disk, Matthew. Removable disk? Ah, there we go. This one. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 Matthew, you shouldn't be doing that. I should be doing that. You go sit down. So let's see. Uh, accept that. <laughs> Uh, X, hit the X in the upper right. There you go. And you got it. All right, I'm sorry. I had to show this. this, this uh, our, our university has a new logo and they paid a lot of money for designing this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is your institute only or the university? No, the university. Ah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, so it's, well, the top part is like a dualizing thing. It looks like. Oh yeah, there's several interpretations, but I think it's just a cane. I did not see that until you pointed it out. But it was very expensive. Not for cows, not for cows. So this is factorization of C-finite sequences, and I'm glad that so many people came because of the despite of summertime. Um, something about which I've been thinking together with Doron uh, recently. So you know what a C finite sequence is? Let's see. Uh, a sequence, Fn, is C finite if it satisfies a recurrence. Uh, Fn, Fn minus 1, Fn minus uh, 17, equal to 0. Meaning that uh, some multiples of it are in a linear relation, and the coefficients here are constants. So that could be 7, uh, 3, 5, and so on. And then we would say 17 is the order of the recurrence, and these are the coefficients. And then if you have something like this, then this doesn't uniquely specify the sequence, of course, but you need uh, initial values also. So if you know the values f0 is equal to 1, f1 equal to minus 13, and so on, up to f 17 equal to uh, 85. Uh, then uh, these initial values, together with the coefficients of the recurrence, uniquely determine all the sequence terms. All right. And now um, such sequences appear in combinatorics, but usually they don't appear in a in, in this form. Usually you don't have a combinatorial thing where you could see. 17 steps into the path and come up directly with the recurrence. So what you more frequently have in, in the first place in combinatorics is a system of recurrences. So you don't have just f, but you have f and g, and then you have a recurrence of this form, f of n, and g of n is equal to, uh, let's say, 5 f n minus 1 plus 7 g n minus 1, and g n is 7 f n minus 1 plus 8 g n minus 1. And then again, you just have to have one starting point, f0 and g0, and then even though this mutually depends on each other, this defines two sequences, uh, uh, and so once you fix something here, then everything is uniquely determined. So what is this here really? If you want to write it a little differently. Oh, you, you don't need F17. Oh. F16 is enough. What? So this, <laughs> this is N. No, no, no. <laughs> this is <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the previous one. Definition of C oh. finite. Can I have a Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you, you can write this like, uh, like this. Fn, uh, Gn as a vector is a certain matrix, uh, fn minus 1, g n minus 1. 
Okay, so let's go to this matrix A. And if you, if you know what this matrix is, then you can uh, apply the matrix several times, and after n steps, uh, you are down to the starting value. Which is so, like this. And, uh, and then you know that the, the Fn and the Gn, they, they are C-finite uh, in this sense. Because there is the theorem of K.D. Hamilton that says that A is killed by a certain uh, polynomial. So there's a polynomial which, when you plug in A, gives zero. But then also, chi A times A to the N times the start value is also zero. So that means you have here something which says that uh, mm, some coefficient times A to the N plus 5 plus some other coefficient A to the uh, n plus 4 uh, x x plus zero plus some coefficient a to the n x is equal to zero. And this means coefficient wise, this one satisfies the recurrence where the coefficients are the coefficients of the minimal polynomial of the minimal polynomial of the matrix. And this one satisfies the same recurrence. Right? Good, and now I'm claiming that uh, this is somehow a more, a more frequent situation than having something that goes to 17. So it's, it's more likely that you have a 17 times 17 matrix, and a first order recurs with that matrix, than to have a scalar one. But because of this, it's the same. Uh, so this one appears maybe in practice more often, but you can translate it, and in fact, in the end, you're just talking about c finite sequences. And also in the other direction, it's easy to go. If you if you have something like this, then you can always bring it down to something of first order. But that, that's a good So where do where do these things arise? I, I give you uh, this one. Yeah. So this is the first order recurrence matrix. I give you some examples, and I want to do that uh, here. I hope it works, even though this is not my computer. So here are some examples. The first is when you count a path in the graph. So here, here's a directed graph, finite directed graph, and here's the adjacency matrix that says uh, in row I and column J, it has a one if there is a, uh, an edge from I to J, so this one corresponds to this edge, and so on. And now we want to fix an N and ask how many paths are there from some point, maybe here, to here, uh, how many paths are there that have exactly n steps? Okay, so this is easy. It's just you raise a to the nth power and then look at what is in, in row i and column j. This will be exactly then the number of paths from a i to j with, with, uh, with the prescribed length. Okay? So that's a, that's a reasonable application if you wish. Uh, here's another one. So you can use this for tilings, for counting tilings. Um, this is a rectangle. It has size 3 in one direction and size n in the other direction. And we want to uh, tile it with uh, dominoes. Uh, so something like this. OK, and we want to know how, how many possibilities are there. And you can answer this in a sim similar way. So you could say, uh, let's, uh, let's consider a partial tiling, maybe one that goes on until here, and it's not completely filled, but it has a, an irregular shape at the end, and then I can ask how many ways are there to complete, uh, uh, to put some more stones to complete one uh, column, uh, and then get another irregular shape. So maybe I can put this, this, and this, and I have completed this column, and also this one, and I have, in this case, the same shape. Or, yeah, or in, in this case, if, if I'm here, then I can just move this, and then I have completed one column, and I have this shape. So you could consider a matrix that has uh, uh, in, in the, it's labeled by rows and columns by all the possible uh, shapes. Uh, and then you write in each matrix entry how many possibilities are there to get from this shape to this shape by completing one column and, and ending up with the next shape. And then uh, the number of tilings altogether would be uh, the number of uh, this, this matrix raised to the nth power. And then you look at the entry that corresponds to the straight shape in the beginning and the straight shape in the end. So that would maybe the top left uh, corner in the matrix. Okay, so in this case, 
is this matrix. You see there are the different shapes. Uh, and then these are the number of possibilities you get from one shape to another. And so you would have to raise this uh, matrix to the nth power. And because of this, you will get a, a C finite sequence in the end. So that's one, and that's the second application. And here's the third application. Um, this is uh, a model from statistical physics, the Ising model. Ising model, um, which uh, describes why water freezes. So this is water uh, in a, at a certain temperature. And you see that the molecules, you don't really see much because it doesn't have enough resolution. You see 4 by 4 is not enough. Let's, let's increase the solution a little. So this is 8 by 8 is also not enough, but maybe this, this is okay. So this is, seven, uh, this is 16 by 16, and you see this is just flowing. Uh, what you should imagine is this is now a dis discrete time. So we are seeing this very, very often, uh, uh, one step after the other. And there is a, again a certain matrix that takes one configuration and tells you what's the next configuration. Uh, and the matrix somehow says that what happens at this position depends on what was previously at this position and the neighborhood. So if there is a lot of red, then this will be likely red. If there's a lot of green, then this is likely to be green. But there's a certain random component in it. And the matrix that describes this transition from one time to the next time has a certain parameter that corresponds to the temperature. So here the temperature is very high, and therefore you don't see any structure. But now let, let's uh, make the temperature lower, and then you will see that uh, things are appearing, and that means the things are clustering. So and now everything is red, that means it's frozen. Ah, and they, yeah. So um, what you would like to know in this model is what is the temperature where the, where the behavior changes. So if, if, at high temperature, you have uh, noise. And at low temperature, you have one color is dominating the other. So there must be some temperature in between where this behavior changes. This is called, yeah, so this is called the melting point of Pirish, yeah? Uh, so this uh, model describes it, but in order to see this, you have to understand these matrices very well. Uh, so this, this is what we, are, uh, what we want to do. And uh, going back to the, to the uh, example of the tilings, because this is easier to explain, uh, the point that makes this happen, uh, that, that, that gives you access to, the, to this melting temperature, is that there are certain closed form expressions for, uh, let's say, the number of tilings. So you can consider this number of tilings for a rectangle of size n and a fixed height, for example, 3, uh, and then you will get a certain C finite sequence for this uh, fixed height and the uh, arbitrary length n. Okay? Now, what happens if you take an, uh, an other height? height 4, 5, 6, and you will get higher and higher all the recurrences because you will get bigger and bigger matrices and the characteristic polynomial of these matrices will be bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, you don't really see how this behaves when the, um, when the height of the uh, uh, triangle is also, that the height of the rectangle is also variable. Uh, that, that we would also like to understand, not just n, but also k. And then the miracle is that there is a closed formula it's not a very nice one, maybe, but it is, there is a formula that tells you the number of tilings in a rectangle of a shape n times k with variable n and k, and it's a double product of something messy. Okay, so what is this really? Um, and how does it have to, what, are, what does it have to do with C finite sequences? We don't see anything that looks C finite at this expression, but you can write this a little different. So you can write it like this. It's the same thing. Now it's just one product. And this is the Chebyshev polynomial. Uh, the Chebyshev polynomial, that's a C finite sequence in N of order 2. Satisfies a second order recurrence. It's something like Fibonacci, uh, a variation of Fibonacci. So you see, this one is a product of essentially K Fibonacci's. Uh, and so that's not so obvious. If you compute this uh, from, the, from the transfer matrix, compute the minimal polynomial, the characteristic polynomial, then you get one polynomial of degree 2 to the k. That doesn't help you very much. What you would really like to have is this product split as, so you would like to factor this and write the product, uh, write this 
uh, big thing as a product of a, a number of small things. So this is the problem that we want to solve now. And uh, all right, so this is uh, for the tilings, but then for and there was a miracle. A priori, there's no reason. No, there's no reason. For, there's no reason for this. Uh, this is for the tilings, and then for the all right. This is what I said. And then for the icing model, the uh, the melting uh, melting ice. There's a similar formula, but it's a little more ugly. But it has the same shape, so it's also a double. Uh, it's, a, it's essentially a product of small c finite things. Okay. So what I would like to explain now is how how do how do you find such a product representation? Given a, a high order c finite linear recurrence scalar, so like this one with 17. How do you see that this 17th uh, solution of 17th order recurrence is actually a product of several uh, smaller C finite sequences? Okay. But 17 is prime, so it's unlikely. It's not impossible. Yeah. 3 is also prime. Yes, but it's not a product of C finite sequences. Now we will see. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Is there any question so far? No. You know this all? He does this in the classes? No. No? C finite? You don't do? Yeah, some classes, but most people. Oh, most so people are in common. Okay. 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 Not everybody here took my classes. Oh, okay. Alright. So let's see. Uh, let's now um, to uh, to see how we can do this factoring. Let's take a recurrence um, C0 Fn plus C1 Fn plus 1 plus 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 Cr Fn plus R equals 0. Um, and I think we can assume that, so we can divide by Cr and assume that this is 1. And uh, we can also assume that this one is non-zero. I think we want to do that. And then well, what else? And then maybe I want to write this uh, really not as a recurrence because that's too cumbersome. I want to write this as a polynomial. So I will write this as C0 uh, plus C1x plus 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 the Cr minus 1, x r minus 1 plus x to the r. And then as a few in the polynomial as an operator, then x on the sequence and sends it to zero, to the zero sequence. And now the question is, how can we factor this operator? So is this here equal to uh, a product of two smaller operators? Uh, but then, so this, this, uh, this product is not the usual product of polynomials. That would be too easy. You could just type it in method. Uh, but the usual product, uh, if you factor this really as a polynomial, that would correspond to the question, can you write the f as a sum? of two simpler C finite sequences. That's also a question, but here we want to write it as a product. So maybe we take a different symbol. Maybe we, we take this, this product symbol for this. So what, what we want to do is factor in, in this sense. And what does it mean in this sense? Um, the reason why this is easy to answer, or relatively easy to answer for C finite sequences is because C finite sequences, you can always solve them in closed form. So if this polynomial here, uh, you, you can factor it, and yeah, so let's say this is x minus uh, um, phi 1 times 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 x minus phi r. These are the roots of the polynomial. Then you know that the fn is a linear combination of exponentials with these phi's. So this is uh, some constant times phi 1 to the n plus some other constant phi, uh, phi 2 to the n plus 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 some constant phi r to the n. Okay? Now you see, if you know this representation, and let's suppose this is square free. Uh, so for simplicity, square free. There's, there's, no, there's no phi here. There's no Question? Yeah. X is just X. So I'm looking at. I'm it's a shift operator. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yes, yeah, so I'm I'm writing this recurrence down in as a, as just as a polynomial. X is just the 
polynomial variable. Sure, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, and then to factor this polynomial means to find these exponentials. All right. So, and then uh, uh, if you know that this can be always written like this, um, and then this, that this is an equivalent representation of C-finite sequences, then you know also that the product of two C-finite sequences will always be C-finite. So if I have this one, and I have Gn, is also a constant linear combination of maybe psi, psi 1, uh, psi 2, but the plus plus psi uh, s, and then, then the product will be again something of this form. Okay, so Fn or Gn, and let's say this is Hn. This will be something I1 psi1 to the n plus, and then all combinations plus something the psi r, no, no, phi, phi r psi s to the n. Okay, so and this is this product which I mean with, with this notation here. Okay. So now that you know this, um, you are given the polynomial that kills the H. That means you are given, essentially you are given these products, except that you don't know how to factor these products. So what we are given here is some rho 1 to the n plus 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 rho, uh, um, I don't know, uh, maybe k to the n. And we are wondering, is this, so how, how do I get from the rows to the phi's and the psi's? That's, that's the problem. May, it may, may, not, may not be possible, maybe there's no factorization. But if there's a factor, so that's what we want to find out. Is there a factorization? And if yes, what is it? Okay, but that means, so let's, let's, uh, let's maybe be more specific and take here 3 and 2, just to get the idea. So something with uh, just three terms, and something with only two terms. So then here we would have phi 1 psi 1, and uh, phi 1 psi 2, phi 2 psi 1, phi 2 psi 2, phi 1 uh, phi 3 psi 1, and phi 3 psi 2. All right. And so these are then uh, the rows. And if I knew it would be in this order, this is what I don't know in advance. But uh, let's suppose somebody told me uh, which one is which. So then this would be the first, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, this is the fifth, and this is the sixth. Then I can see that there is some uh, there are some which are they, they are not completely arbitrary. These rows they have some uh, they have some uh, relations among each other because if you take uh, this one and this one you take the quotient so that would be rho one divided by rho two uh, that would be the the phi one would cancel so this would be uh, psi one divided by psi two but you get also uh, you get this also by taking these two and take the quotient. So rho uh, 3 divided by rho 4 is the same. And uh, also the, the last two. So if you take uh, rho 5 and rho 6, it will also be the same. So even if you don't know what the psi's are, you know that these quotients must all be equal. Uh, because the phi's would have to cancel out. And also you can do that uh, with uh, the, uh, any other way, with the psi's. So how would we do this? Then we would have uh, rho 1 divided by rho 3. This one must be the same as this one. So that's the same as rho 2 divided by rho 4. And then this must be again the same as uh, this divided by this, which is uh, 3 and 5. Okay. Just same as uh, um, what is it? I don't think so. Oh no, nothing. nothing. Okay, sorry. There's, there's this. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I got 
does for us time. Yes. <laughs> Still have some time. Okay. So this one, um, the quotient of those ones, this is psi 1 divided by psi 2. Okay. Now I can do this also to get psi 1 and psi 3, which is... Psi 1, psi 3, and psi 1, psi 2. Uh, oh yeah, thank you. Okay, so I would take um, over 1 over 5 should be the same as over 2 over 6. Is that right? But you know that the rows have to satisfy these equations. So if they don't, then there may be two explanations. Either there is no factorization, or you number them in the wrong way. But there are only finitely many ways to number them. So you can try them all out and see if there's one numbering for which they satisfy these equations. Then you have found a factorization, because that's actually a sufficient condition. As soon as you have this, you can choose one of these things arbitrarily, maybe this one. And then you can use the equations to determine all the other ones. And then, then you are done. Okay? So that's the idea. So this works only if uh, the things are separated. So if you have uh, maybe something, uh, if you have something that has six roots and it factors into two times three, uh, because six is two times three. And now if you have something which has a, um, a lower order, like something which has order 3, you only have 3 rows, or 1, or 2, or 3, then this is what Doran suggested, they cannot be factored, because 3 is a prime, so how would you, how, how many phi's would you have, and how many psi's? It turns out that this is too, too simple, it can, it can still be that there's a factorization, so for example, if you take um, phi 1 is equal to 2, and phi 2 is equal to 3, and psi 1 is 2, and psi 2 is 3. So let's see what you get. Uh, for the row 1, you get uh, 2 times 2, this is 4, and for the row 2, you get 2 times 3, which is 6, and then for the row 3, you get 3 times 2, which is also 6, and then for the row 4, you get 3 times 3, which is 9. So if you have a polynomial that is x minus 4, x minus 6, x minus 9, then you won't have here a, a, a square. This, this won't appear. So this is just actually the LCM of all these, of all these combinations, and not the product. So you will see this root only once, but it has to be counted twice. Otherwise, the factorization wouldn't work out. OK? Um, so this one actually factors. This here is in, in our notation. This is x minus two, x minus three, product with x minus two, x minus three. You agree? Yeah. So seventeen could also factor. Yeah, but it's not generic. Yeah, but still, we need to we need to take care of this. So how do we take care of this? Yeah, there's there's no there's no big surprise here. Uh, oh, this one doesn't move. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, there's no big surprise, so it's it just you have to be you, you still have, you can play the same game. You just have to be a little bit more careful. So what is it that we are really looking for here? If we are look, we are we are trying to find a factorization in this case when we have given six roots, maybe of uh, into something of order two and something of order three. So that means what we are really looking for is that is a map one two times 1, 2, 3 into 1 up to 6. So that means we are, uh, we, are looking, so we are looking for a way to number these roots in the right order. And that means we, are, we want to assign each pair phi i, psi j for still unknown i's and j's and phi's and psi's to rho k. So rho pi of ij. Right? So this is, this is what this pi does. 
And uh, what I explained before would suggest that this pi has to be a bijection 